U.S. lawmakers say student loan forgiveness will hurt military recruiting. Nineteen members of the U.S. House of Representatives have written a letter to President Joe Biden and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin cautioning that the partial cancellation of student debts can have the unintended consequence of reducing military recruitment in the United States. The letter reads as follows, quote, Dear President Biden, We write to you to share our concerns about the unintended consequences of your decision to cancel up to $20,000 of student loan debt per borrower. We are particularly concerned about the negative impact this will surely have on our nation's military and their ability to recruit and retain top talent. As you know, some of the most successful recruiting incentives for the military are the GI Bill and student loan forgiveness programs. The idea that the military will pay for schooling during or after completion of a service obligation is a driving factor in many individuals' decision to join one of the services. A recent estimate showed that as many as 178,000 service members were eligible for some type of forgiveness. By forgiving such a wide swath of loans for borrowers, you are removing any leverage the Department of Defense maintained as one of the fastest and easiest ways to pay for higher education. We recognize the loan forgiveness programs have issues on their own, but this remains a top recruiting incentive. Currently, a mere 23% of the population is eligible to serve in the military. Even fewer of those have a propensity to serve. At the end of last month, the Army had only reached 66% of its recruiting goal for the year, the Navy only 89%. It is no secret that each of the services continues to battle hardships in recruiting, and now these problems will be exacerbated by removing the uniqueness of this benefit. As the services try to adopt unique approaches to tackle their recruiting challenges, including historic bonuses, It feels like their legs are being cut out from underneath them. With this in mind, we ask you to provide us answers to the following questions. Was the effect on military service considered in the development of the recent student loan forgiveness decision? What is the administration's plan to develop incentives to augment the loss of those who might join the military to help pay off student loans? What improvements are being made to ensure timely payments to those currently enrolled in the public service loan forgiveness programs for both active duty and reserve components? Thank you for your attention to this matter. End quote. So they're just coming right out and admitting it. One of the reasons the U.S. government doesn't offer the same kinds of social support systems that people have in all other wealthy nations is because otherwise there'd be no economic pressure on young Americans to sign up for service in the U.S. war machine. This is no secret, but it's generally considered taboo for government officials to actually say so. People have been talking about the poverty draft for many years. The established fact that a majority of U.S. military recruits come from neighborhoods with below median income levels, and that those neighborhoods are targeted for recruitment because impoverished communities often see military service as their only chance at upward mobility. But the term poverty draft can create a bit of confusion, because when most Americans hear poverty, they think homeless people and those who can barely afford to eat or keep a roof over their heads. In reality, the U.S. is a nation where a majority of the population would be unable to pay for a $1,000 emergency expense from their savings, and the level at which economic pressure is felt to join the military is much higher than the very poorest of the poor. Those economic pressures are why U.S. Army officials have explicitly said that the student loan crisis is to thank for their success in meeting recruitment goals. Here's a 2019 Military Times tweet. How did the Army exceed its recruiting goals this year? It was the student loan crisis, not the wars, service leaders say. So the U.S. Empire has a huge incentive to maintain a very large population of Americans who are economically uncomfortable, and this plays a significant role in the domestic policy-making decisions of that nation's government. The U.S. Empire is held together by constant violence and the threat thereof, and its ability to apply that violence would be crippled without a steady supply of warm teenage bodies to feed into its war machine. It is therefore no exaggeration to say that the U.S. empire would collapse without the economic pressures which coerce teens to sign up to kill and be killed, 
over things like oil reserves and Raytheon profit margins. It's one of those things that looks more ghoulish the more you think about it. In the wealthiest nation in the world, economic justice is actively suppressed in part to ensure that young Americans will feel financially squeezed into killing foreigners who are far more impoverished than they are. They are keeping people poor so that they will commit mass murder. It's actually hard to think of anything more depraved than that. But such is the nature of the capitalist empire. You are either a useful gear-turner of the machine, or you are liquidated and turned into fuel for its engine. If you're not a successful capitalist, you can be used to defend the empire with pricey weaponry. If you're not helping the empire, you can be used to drive up profits for the military-industrial complex as a target for war machinery whose costly munitions will need to be replaced. If you're not a good gear-turner, you can be sent to become a prison slave or incarcerated in a private for-profit prison. There's a use for everyone in the empire. The globe-spanning power structure that is centralized around the United States is the most evil, soulless, and destructive force on this planet. The young people who are duped, manipulated, and financially coerced into joining its war machine come back horrifically traumatized by the experiences they have in the situations they are placed in. Something better is needed. This cannot continue.